What is up guys, it's Sam from the Axe Palace again, and today, today we're checking out the Mesa Triple Crown 100 and comparing it against the PRS Archon 100. Now there are some similarities and some differences between these two amps, which we'll discuss later, but they're both around the same size and price point, so we thought it would be an interesting comparison. First, we're going to listen to them both back to back in the same track like we did for the Rectifier comparison video. After we've heard that, I'm going to solo out the guitars so we can hear them in isolation. Third, I'm going to reamp a couple riffs of one solo guitar through both amps with all the knobs at noon so we can hear the difference in fundamental tone. After that, we'll talk through the setup, discuss the details that set these two apart, and finally I'll give my opinions. Anyway, let's get into it.
So in the full track, I recorded both amps the way I would do it if I were recording a song for myself. That means with the boost in front and the knobs turned the way I like it. On the Triple Crown, I was using the high gain channel with the tight switch engaged, solo boost off and reverb off. On the Archon, I was using the only gain channel with the bright switch engaged. For consistency, both amps were in 100 watt mode, had their master volume set to noon, used the same boost settings, and were both running into the same IR blend in the Torpedo. The IRs we used are the same homemade blend of my Engel 212 that I use for every video. They're also available for free download, I'll leave a link in the description for anybody interested. To work around any volume discrepancies, I used the input level on the Torpedo to make sure both amps were feeding the virtual cabinet the same volume. Once the reamped DIs were recorded, I normalized the level of all of them to the quieter of the two so as to not bring up the noise pool. The normalizing didn't do a whole ton since the output of the torpedo didn't change, but better to be thorough than not. The isolated guitar section was the exact same mix, but with the bass and drums muted. For the single isolated guitar, I recorded a new performance entirely, and I apologize for subjecting you all to my mistakes. But at least you know it's real, right? For the tone, I reset every knob to noon, turned the boost off, and followed the same leveling procedure during the reamping process. So, let's talk about these two amps, and I got my laptop with all my notes here so I don't forget anything for you. Let's start with what makes them similar. Both of them, at the time of shooting, are currently priced $100 apart, with the Archon coming in at $2,300 and the Triple Crown coming in at $2,400. Well, $2,399 to be exact, but, you know. They both are 100 watts of full power and both offer some amount of power scaling. They're both physically about the same size, being a little smaller than your average 100 watt tube head. They both can cover all the way from sparkling cleans to modern high gain with ease. They both come with a foot switch, but we'll discuss this more in a minute. So, onto the broad things that make these two different. The Archon only offers two channels, clean and dirty, whereas the Triple Crown offers three. A clean channel, a high gain, and a low gain. The preamp section of both amps uses six 12 AX7 tubes, but the Triple Crown uses a seventh preamp tube, which is a 12 AT7 in the V5 slot to power the effects loop. The Archon's power section uses four 6L6 power tubes, whereas the Triple Crown comes stock with four EL34s. However, the Triple Crown also has a bias switch, which allows you to safely use 6L6s at the flip of the switch. If you're worried about the weight, the Triple Crown is 3 pounds heavier coming in at 46 pounds over the Archon's 43. Now let's talk about the differences. Starting with the Archon, the Archon has a bright switch on both channels, the Triple Crown has no bright switch. The Archon has a depth knob which allows you to control the bass response of the power section, whereas the Triple Crown does not, it only has presence control. The Archon has convenient bias jacks on the back panel which you can access without taking anything apart. The Triple Crown does not, but it does have the bias switch so you can switch between 6L6 power tubes and EL34 power tubes without changing it. Well, besides the tube. Now for the Triple Crown, and here's where the notes are really important. While the Triple Crown doesn't have any bright switches, it does have a tight switch on both gain channels which offers a different shape for your low end. Additionally, the clean channel has a drive switch for people who want more of a pushed clean set. The Triple Crown has an adjustable solo boost, so you can have that extra volume boost without relying on any pedals. The Archon does not. The Triple Crown can power scale from 100 watts down to 50, 20, 7, or even 3 watt modes, whereas the Archon can only cut in half from 100 to 50 watts. The Triple Crown has a built-in cab clone, which is an internal load box that allows you to run the head without any cabinet attack. This means you can plug the head directly into an interface or front of house mixing board, or even play through the amp silently with headphones without concerns of damaging anything. Note that the simulated cabinet sound is limited to the three built-in options, but it's still better than nothing. The Archon has no direct recording solution built in. The Triple Crown has a built-in tube-driven spring reverb, which you can control the level of per channel. The Archon has no reverb. The Triple Crown supports MIDI switching, whereas the Archon can only be switched with the included proprietary foot switch. And that finally brings us to the foot switches themselves. The Triple Crown has an included six button foot switch with buttons for clean channel, low gain channel, high gain channel, solo boost on off, effects loop on off, and a reverb on off. The Archon's included foot switch only offers channel switching and effects loop on and off. And that, my friends, concludes the differences between these two beasts. Now onto the most important part of the video and obviously why you all are here, my personal opinions. So who's each one of these amps for? I think the Archon is great for guys that want something super bare bones, not a ton of bells and whistles that can break, it gives you just the amount of features that you need, nothing more, nothing less. You plug it in, you turn it on, and it sounds great. The Triple Crown, on the other hand, is great for someone who needs a little bit more. If you're going to be doing some home recording and can only afford one tube amp to cover all of your bases, the Triple Crown is a great option. 
Regardless of which you prefer, both amps are guaranteed to provide you with great tone for years to come. Anyway guys, I think that just about finishes up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Hit that thumbs up button if you did so we know we're on the right track. Talk to us in the comments down below if you have any questions, criticisms, complaints, compliments, concerns, or suggestions of what we should tackle next. Subscribe if you aren't already and do the bell thing so you know when our next video is up. Don't forget the IRs are linked for free download in the description, so be sure to snag those because I'd love to hear what you guys think of them. Lastly, thank you guys so much for watching. That's it for me and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.